simplicity is about subtracting the obvious and adding the meaningful. John Maida, my friends, we have subtracted all the obvious and added all the meaningful we can to the way that we track these charts. And what do we do? Well, we use the Heikenoshi candlesticks as simplified as they get and as accurate and helpful as they are. And we use trend lines and, of course, volume. I believe Jesse Livermore would be proud of us. That's who I'm dedicating our latest book to. And I'm making my way through it, sharing some of those chapters and such as we get them together for you. And I can't wait to have the latest book ready so that I can share it with you and you can enjoy it and hopefully get a lot out of it. It's all about three-wave trading, the three waves of the weekly, the two-day, and the half-day. And the waves are, of course, the price movement that is reflected in the Heikenashi candlesticks and, of course, the volume that we pay close attention to that tells us so much about accumulation, distribution, what the insiders are up to, what the market's really thinking. It's like, it's, it's like having a seeing stone to be able to look into exactly what is going on. It is fascinating. And of course, we'll be sharing more and more of that with you each and every day as we come to you absolutely for free. Let's jump into these charts. Stocks rebounding a little bit for the day, as is gold and Bitcoin. We see bonds going down quite heavily, 1.33%. Let's first look at the S&P 500 as we start the week out. We can see that we have not reached the bottom that we hit last week. We do have a red down candle. We can see where the Heikenashi candlestick is opening up. Not a big candle yet. Volume, not all that great either. Now, this is just the first day of a five-day candle, but that doesn't look like one-fifth of last week's candle. We'll see how the week continues to move along. We look here at our two-day candle. This is just the first day of the latest two-day candle. I tell you what, let's bring along. First, let's call up the chart and make sure that we are drawing the best trend line possible like to connect all three, but I can't really do that without cutting the head off of the middle candlestick here on the three down moves. And what do we see going on there? Of course, we see on the two day chart, it is below as is the weekly this week. I'm sorry, the two day and the half day are below the weekly trend line. Now we look at the half day, you can see below average volume in the morning, a spinning top up in the afternoon, and you can see a lot of that up movement being cut down by the time it closed up 0.65%. So again, not giving up on this down move, not anywhere close. Let's look at where we are on the queues. Now, it was up substantially more than the S&P 500, more than two times more, up 1.61% up in the morning, further up in the afternoon, higher than, a vol higher than average volume in the morning, and less in the afternoon. We see a red down candle on the first day of the latest two-day candle, and a red down candle forming, not hitting the low on the weekly chart. And again, below it on the two-day where we look at the weekly trend line. Remember, it's this weekly trend line that we are trading off of. We're trading off of the weekly chart, rather. And we're using this weekly trend line to help us then judge how the other charts compare to the trend. Are these other charts, the two-day and the half-day candles, violating this weekly trend line? No, they're below it. We're in a down move. Those of you who are new, you might be saying, why are you telling us about a down move? Who would be buying the NASDAQ 100 when it's going down? We wouldn't be. We would either be shorting it with puts or we would be in something like PSQ. What is PSQ? It's the pro share short. And it's going up while the NASDAQ 100 is going down on 20-year, I'm sorry, not 20-year bonds, on the S&P we have SH, that is the ProShare single short, and it is going up as the S&P is going down. So just a little bit of sophistication there. I want you to practice trade these things. They do work different than the regular underlying ETFs. And every deal with a shorting fund, they're higher fees 
They're revalued on a very, you know, often like on a daily basis. So if it goes down 2% and then goes up 2%, it's going down from the higher 2% price and then going up from the lower 2% price. So it doesn't go back up to where it was. You got to keep that in mind if it's revalued. So that is one of the problems if things don't go in your direction. There's also higher fees. Many times they're about 10 times higher. Now, again, the fees on a regular ETF aren't all that high, but those do bite into your profit too. That's why I say you need to know what you're doing. You need to practice trade this stuff. We're not a stock calling service. We're an education firm. We're not giving you market advice, but we want you to practice trade and learn how this stuff works. Let's move on to 20-year bonds. Check them out. Doesn't that look beautiful? Now, TBF is the inverse for 20-year bonds. I'll show you that. Tango, Bravo, Foxtrot. That is the single inverse, the pro shares. And of course, it's been going up for the last four weeks, which is beautiful. Now, again, I don't switch charts to my inverses and all. I just stay on my underlying charts to show you what's going on. You can track it on the inverse fund on your own accord if that's what you want to do. I'm just going to keep it simple so we know when we're short and when we're long and nobody gets confused because I don't even know if I could keep it straight when I'm talking about the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, 20-year bonds, and then I have to then switch around and say the inverse and blah, blah, blah. Not going to get confused. But we do see four weeks going down quite strongly. Nice two-day candle. First day of the latest two-day candle heading down. Look at that higher than average volume in the morning, slackening off in the afternoon. And in fact, didn't go as low in the afternoon as it did in the morning. So keep an eye on that. We go to gold. Gold up a little bit for the day. You can see a lot of indecision in the morning. uh, Lower than average volume, even lower in the afternoon. Two spinning tops. So again, no change yet in gold. Opening the week with a red down candle. First day of the latest two-day candle down. We see price on the two-day chart and the half-day chart well below the weekly trend line. Let's go to Bitcoin, up a little bit, 0.11%. So 11 tenths of 1%, not up much. We can see where Bitcoin really dropped down hard on Friday and is about at that same spot still. Hoping Bitcoin will keep pulling back strongly and then do what? Give us a nice clean turnaround so we can follow it because we want to practice trade chart and practice trade Bitcoin. Give us something to practice trade off of. Give us a chart where we can follow. That's what we're waiting for. Folks, I so appreciate you being with us. We always love to hear from you. Don't hesitate to reach out to us, cw at chartingwealth.com. If you want to find out about options, learn how to trade them, hey, first thing you do, first thing you get When you sign up at any of the three levels of Patreon support for us as you get our three-part series, Options Made Simple, The Charting Wealth Way, you will love it. Think about it. God bless, my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.